Right, so we're going to talk to Isabella Fuzzani from Brazil now, and her talk is called Pornography, Propaganda and the Validation of Hatred Towards Women. She's a member of Re Re Refuse a Cicla, Cicar, radical feminist and a lawyer. She's going to talk to us, Pornography, Propaganda and the Validation of the Hatred Towards Women. So thank you for speaking, Isabella, and over to you. Oh, well, I'm a Brazilian lawyer and I work as an advisor in the Federal House of Representatives. I am also doing a master's degree on political science and feminine representative representation in Brazilian Congress. But today I'm not here to talk about politics. And I, I'm here because I dedicate what little spare time I have on the anti-porn fight. Why am I here? Two years ago, I joined the project Recusia Clicar. <laughs> and it's refuse to click in English. And since then, this has been one of the greatest challenges I have faced. When I was invited to speak with you at first, I imagine I could speak about pornography in general, as I usually do when I'm invited to Brazilian events. However, since I found out what I would, I found out that I would be preceded by Professor Dines and that I would be the only Latin American woman to speak, I thought I could contribute in another way. I thought about speaking a little more of our initiative, Recusa and about speaking a little more of the reality of women in Latin America, more specifically in Brazil. Uh, our project is anti-porn and anti-prostitution, and we work on the practical and real consequences of the future of that culture in our society mainly Brazilian society. The project began as a Facebook page on groups with, without greater ambitions. Today we have accounts on Facebook, internet, Twitter, and Medium. Medium. Together, these platforms amass something around 150,000 followers. More than numbers of followers. What really excites me is that intense debate we have on all these platforms. Our posts are always debated among all our followers, which makes me feel we are able to create more than followers. We are creating new supporters for the cause. Our approach is to mix dance content with lighter stuff without losing sight of the seriousness that the movement should have. We produce a theoretical text. We translate a lot of foreign content. We share news of scientific research. We produce memes and videos. But above all, what I feel really moves people is when we show them real news and connect them with the rape and pedophilia culture. Much more than create creating some sort of sensationalism. We show how all we talk about actually affects the lives of women and children. We prove that it's not snowflake talk, that we are not exaggerating. We have already featured men podcasts, interview, interviews, roundtables, and have been published in many of the largest means of communication in Brazil like magazines, Carta Capital, Marie Claire, and Wall. We have managed to get in contact with some Brazilian ex-porn actresses, and together with them, we have been showing how this industry, even in our Brazilian version, is violent. We ended up having a role I, ne I have never expected to have, which is to private privately provide support to those former actresses to deal with, with so much trauma and harassment that last even so long after they have abandoned the industry. These actresses informed us and sent us cop copies 
of the signed contract. They were in English. And of course, they don't, they can't read them. There was a never that was and never was consent to what happened with the with her. With her. I would also like to take this opportunity to inform you of our, our next project. That is to interview actresses and translate the interview to English and Spanish. Once translation has been done, I intended to share them with you because I see that anti-porn content outside the US and Europe is still very limited. We also received many testimonies from people who are or were addicted to porn, actresses, former actresses, prostitutes, and people who have worked on pornography film sets. We share those testimonies with our followers, of course, protecting the identities of those people. In spite of now being a group of radical feminist women, I believe that our success is due in part to the fact that we try to not communicate only with other radical feminists. So even through even though they are not the majority, one fourth of our followers are men. And I thought it was important to bring our experience to you because I consider it to be a great success. In three years, we have managed to reach a lot of people, people and niches that I would never have believed we would reach. And I reiterate this this because it's very important that us radical feminists take the helm of the anti-porn and anti-prostitution fight because we can give up this space, this space to moralists and to the no-fab enthusiasts. These, are, these other movements only spread other forms of misogyny that do not serve us in anything. Evidently, as our intention is to expand the knowledge about the anti-porn struggle, the depth of the criticism we made in some situations end up being more limited than we would like to do to we would like it to be. But the purpose of our project is to pierce this bubble and reach the largest number possible of people without losing the real essence of the anti-porn movement which is to fight to protect women and children. In, in this sense, warning mothers of the danger of pornography is one of our biggest concerns. Since, the unfortunate, since unfortunately, the care of parents with their children and teenagers on the internet is still is not very widespread. And we talk a lot to women and girls about the struggle of being a woman in a country that hates women. Obviously, I do not believe that our initiative alone will be able to change the entire Brazilian culture. But even movements like NoFap and the coaches that tried to help the addicted had a change in behavior since we be began. And I can say that because the anti-porn movement is still very small in Brazil and this change was obvious. The approach that was too center in men addicted to porn became a more structural, structural approach. At this moment, I believe it's very important to highlight the specificities of this movement in Latin America. I begin with a disclaimer. I am a Latin America woman, but I'm a Brazilian woman. Brazil has a colonization history that differs a lot from other countries of the region. It started from us being invaded by Portugal. It is important to remark that we, are we were invaded and not discovered. When speaking with people from the global north, America was not discovered. There was an invasion followed by genocide and slavery. Different from 
differently from the Latin America, the other Latin American countries, we have a very small indigenous population concentrated in the north of Brazil. Our indigenous people were exterminated by the Portuguese colonization. On the other hand, we are the country with the largest black population outside Africa. And if you're considering Africa, we are second, we are the second. Only uh, Nigeria is bigger than us. The Brazilian population is comprised of 50% of black and mixed race people, which correspond to more than 100 million people. Why did I choose to comment of uh, to comment on the composition of Brazilian society, because rape culture, rape culture is spread by pornography is experienced differently depending on where you are. If it is obvious and undeniable that every woman suf suffers from the influence of pornography, the farther you go towards the periphery of capitalism, the more the woman is objectified and made disposable. And I bring a simple and cruel example. When pornography streaming website, we still did not dominate the market. The pornography that came to Brazil came from the United States. A pornography mainly made by white women and men. Black women and men are always bestialized and treated as a fetish. If this is cruel in a society of the United States, where the black population represents something around 13% of the total of the population, how cruel is, is this in a society that black population represents more than 50% of the population? And that is a, and that in an extremely unequal, sexist, and racist country. If one adds the facts caused by pornography to a society already, already, already unstained by structural racism, the result is what we have here in Brazil. Black women, women being treated as ferial in a sexual manner. The women who are only good to fuck, women the color of sin, among men of other de degrading, stereotypes. Just as we see in porn, the black woman is the most disrespected, objectified, and raped. It is so real that I have to come here to explain to you that even living in a country where half the women are black, the beauty is turned out for the vulva is the pink of the porn from the United States. A white beauty standard, of course. A few days ago, I became aware of a vulva beauty con contest. Yeah, a vulva beauty contest performed performed in Brazil, and were and where obviously all the women chosen chosen to participate were white women. And I'm, I'm not gonna even begin discussing how such a big, a beauty, a vulva beauty contest is an absurd in itself, since I'm addressing only feminist women. And however unnecessary it may seem, I'd rather make one thing clear. It is not as if we, it is not as if it, it were an advantage to white women. I, Isabella, a Brazilian white woman, have already been harassed countless times by men asking me if my vulva is pink. The level of violence is not the same, and I do not, do not mean to compare, but feminine objectification is violent, no matter how it is. It is so problematic, problematic that Brazilian men were exposed in the international media during the 2018 World Cup in Russia, harassing a local news reporter by chanting 
Pinky Pussy. This kind of behavior has become so normal that the men themselves share the, share the footage of the har harassment on the internet. Proud of the tirade, the reported reporter obviously did not understand anything that was being said since the harassment was in Portuguese. And I'm speaking of the I'm speaking of the Brazilian reality of Brazilian women enduring violence in Brazil. Whatever the advantage a Brazilian woman has in Brazil, it goes down the drain at the moment we leave the country. Because we cease being the white woman and start being the Brazilian woman or the Latin American woman. And we become part of a different group of people. If any of us enter any pornography streaming website, we will see the abundance of, thing, of things related to Brazilian women, such as big ass, anal, orgy, carnival, etc. Most of the tags related to Brazilian women correspond to orgies in parties like the carnival. And I confess, I, su I, I expected something more related to us. But this explains the unending harassment we suffer for being, for being seen as easy woman. And if all Brazilian women suffer from, from that, it is obvious that black Brazilian women are the ones who suffer the most. Type the term mulata, and you see an, an horror, horror show. Most of those videos will be of black women being even more bestialized with a focus on anal sex. The term dirty ass, dirty ass, yeah, dirty ass is very common. Another very common category is that of foreign tourists coming to Brazil because of sexual tourism. Unfortunately, there are many videos of white men coming to Brazil to rape our women and our children. And there is something we have in common with other Latin America countries. Various videos of gringos coming to rape our children with the certainty of impunity. There are many videos of girls with still forming breasts. They are children. To be clear, I am not saying that porn is the sole responsible for that. The racism, the patriarchy, and the white European disregard toward the people of the global, so global South were there before pornography and will continue, continue existing, even without pornography. Pornography, however, fools even more the even more the hatred and the violence against underprivileged women. Due to the complexity of the problem, the analysis of pornography as a whole, as a whole cannot fail to consider capitalism and the patriarchy together with racial aspects. Any analysis on pornography, pornography that does not consider its complexity in view of the capitalism and patriarchal society we live in, in, a, in is an incomplete and shallow analysis. And well, this is what I wanted to share with you. My intervention here is one of the analysis I make and try to share with my followers. I confess that when the audience is not anti-capitalist or radical feminist, my tongue is a little is a little smoother, but I believe that here I don't need to restrain myself. 